Welcome, everyone. I am John Ryan, and this is the Predicted Playbook Financial Market Show. We're going to talk about some futures market activity and opportunities uh, between Steve Merrill and myself. Steve Merrill is the expert sports betting guy over at Wager Talk. I really don't know anybody right now that's running better than him on a longer term basis, and that's kind of what this is all about. And that's why we do a financial show together. We're not trying to give you a trade here to go out and buy call options and expect the company to be bought out tonight. We're looking at longer term fundamental and macroeconomic trends that are in place that possibly can make us all a little bit of change and uh, a lot of profits over the longer term. Welcome to the show, Steve. It's been a while for you and I with our crazy schedules, but I'm glad that we uh, collided today. How's everything going? Yeah, doing well. And um, yeah, today, Monday is crazy, to say the least. I mean, we obviously had the World Series in just a few days ago, uh, right after the NBA starts, college and pro football going strong. And now we have over 100 college basketball games. They didn't mess around. Like Normally, there's one or two that trickles in over 100 plus on November 6th. I guess this was the official day where they could start and they all took advantage of it. Yeah, it almost seemed like they were, you know, November 6th would be 116 if you read it out, November 11 being and then the sixth day. Right. So I was thinking maybe that's the new schedule for college basketball and, and college football for that matter. But nevertheless, uh, glad that you're on board here. And let's get right into one topic I wanted to mention is that uh, for the longest time now, we have thought that Apple Computer is by far the biggest company in terms of market cap in the world. And here's the stock on this one, uh, the chart, I mean. Did you know that Microsoft is only 140 million away from exceeding Apple as the number one uh, market cap stock in the world? That, that's shocking to me. Um, I was just talking to someone the other night, actually, on Halloween, as I was trick or treating, talking to somebody about, um, you know, the, how the market is so heavily, you know, top five or top seven makes up basically the whole S and P 500, and I still just don't get Apple because. There's no need in the next 10 years for anybody to replace an iPhone at this point or a MacBook like I'm using, a MacBook Pro like I'm using right now. You know, and they come out with these little gimmicks like you have to have the Seaport chargers and the $100 adapters. But it does concern me. Now, I know they have a ton of cash and they're probably buying up other things. But yeah, that's crazy though, John, because Microsoft's like kind of the company you feel like they passed 20 years ago. And I kind of felt like Apple was going to become the next Microsoft where somebody passes them. But now that you say that, it's like Microsoft really hasn't been passed by anybody and they're quietly doing other things. I think that's what kind of goes under the radar. Yeah, I agree, especially in artificial intelligence. I use some yep. of Microsoft's products for both uh, trading uh, applications that I've built and also in the sports betting markets. As you and I like to say, they're based on the same premise. You know, Vegas is not trying to trick you. Um, the market is not trying to trick you. It, they, you know, buyers and sellers on equal sides is what Vegas wants. That's what Wall Street wants. And it creates equilibrium. And that's how they make their money, the market makers, that is. And that's how the books make their money. It's the same principle. And I'm not suggesting that Wall Street is gambling. You and I approach sports betting as an investment, a long term investment, because on any given Sunday, any given Saturday, you know, you're either the dog or the fire hydrant. And sometimes uh, you're the fire hydrant and there's, 200 dogs in the neighborhood taking advantage of that. But that's life. You know, nobody wins every single day at anything they do. So um, I just pulled up the Microsoft chart there. Now I'm going to switch back over to Apple. And you can just do the eye candy test. You know, even if you don't know what all these uh, different letters and things are on uh, mean here, for those that are watching, it's that's actually the moving average convergence divergence strategy method. But you can see that Apple is now bouncing kind of off the lows, whereas Microsoft is this one. And that's like a more of a saucer bottom, I think you would agree, Steve. And, you know, right. it's almost at a 52-week high. Yeah, I mean, it looks so, like a, it's basically a double bottom. I mean, it's very, I mean, it's to the, to the T here, those last couple of bottoms yep. over the past year. And then you look at where it is now, it's about to take out, I guess, it, would that be an all-time high? It's definitely a recent high. Yeah, that would be um, right here is the all-time high. And that is uh, 366 dollars and 78 cents a share so it's only 11 dollars away from making a, an all-time high right and then so of course apple you look at apple the apple chart's almost identical to the s p chart and the s p chart is still in a downward slope um it's got to go back to basically the end of 2021 to get near its high so it's almost two years off its all-time high um yeah and so it, there's a huge um it's an out, i guess you could say microsoft's a huge outperformer whereas apple's basically is the s p and they're the you know the largest company so that makes sense but 
yeah, I think that's really the way to play it. Everyone's, you know, worried about the S&P. It's overpriced. You definitely probably want to be more stock pickers right now than just holding the index. And if you hold the index, you probably want to at least take Apple out and hold every, hold the other 499. You probably And that's historic. I mean, if you look back over 50, 100 years, if you hold the other 499, you've done better than I think the S&P 500 because – once you get as big as they are, you know, you know, it's almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that you can't continue to outperform. Yep, I agree. And this uh, chart up now is the S&P 500. This area right here is a 50% retracement. Uh, Steve and I like to look at Fibonacci retracement numbers uh, as they come up quite a bit. So a 50% retracement would be a violation of that would actually put you into a bearer market trend and by many definitions, right in here, we were in a bear market type of definition, but um, you know what a tremendous rally late last week from basically Tuesday on. Um, look, you know, we're trading in a very tight range today ahead of the election uh, tomorrow, uh, which is going to be the first one of many that we uh, have to attend and don't have to attend that we want to attend and and cast our votes in uh, all the different states and localities that are going to be having one tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, I know uh, lastly, too, uh, not lastly, but we had looked at natural gas. Yeah. Uh, and this you, was kind of I know your, when it jumped. I thought you wanted to jump the other month. <laughs> yep. And let me let me pull up uh, the current. There. So here we have natural gas futures. And we had talked about the high being up here at 758 back in November of uh, last year. And then it. It crashed, as did crude oil from 135 bucks a barrel. It came all the way down to like almost in the high 50s, and then it's been just kind of chopping around. But the trend now looks like it's building a base, building a base, and now we popped up, like you said. Are you still bullish on this to go back up near four or five bucks? It's the exact same premise. I mean, first of all, every trade, whether it be life in general or the markets, you got to look at risk reward, right? Because you know you could have a it's like playing underdogs in baseball. You know, you could have a 30% win percentage if you're playing three or four dollars, four to one underdogs all the time, you're coming out ahead. And that's what you want to look for here. And the risk reward on this is tremendous still. And this is exactly why we talked about it this summer and even in the spring, because it can't go much lower. I know it could go lower, but you know, you see where it's been in recent years, you know, and within the last year or two, how high it could get. I mean, just look at UNG, which is the ETF traded. Um, just over a year ago, August 22nd, it was as high as like 32, you know, and a year later it's in the low sixes. So yes, it could go to zero. Actually it can't probably, but you know, it's natural gas, it's a commodity. I don't know the ETF could, I guess maybe I'd have to look at that. But as far as the futures go, natural gas is not going negative, you know, and it's not going to zero, um, but it could spike. And I've found it interesting too, John, that this whole rundown has really been since the Ukraine war started. It's really kind of counterintuitive. Um, you know, the yeah. Biden administration near election season is starting to open up things now because they have to try to catch up and not have this kill energy policy that's just been devastating things the last few years. So that's another reason maybe it could stay down a little. But, you know, if you look at the, the uh, betting markets right now, Trump is a slight favorite over Biden. It's like 37 to 33 percent. Um, and that would probably also be favorable, I would think, for, you know, natural gas and things like that. So. Maybe it's front running a little bit based on that. But yeah, I still think there's a lot of upside. But look at supports, right? We don't have to try to guess when it's going to break out because it's been in a downtrend for a year now. Um, you know, let it continue to bottom. And then if it has a little bit of a breakout, jump in then. Don't try to time it. Yeah, I think this level here, right where I'm looking at, uh, that's 302. Uh, anything south of 305, uh, if it gets there even, I, I think that probably is a pretty decent entry point for maybe 25% of a position. And that's another thing that Steve and I do. Yeah. You know, I use live in-game betting a lot. And I'm trying to teach clients how to how to benefit from it. And unfortunately, you can't watch every game like we can watch every single commodity and place orders. Um, I wish we could do that in sports betting, but that will not ever be allowed. But anyway, um, with this situation, you know, you're basically putting in a, a position at 25% of your full blown position at say 305 or south of it. And then if it dips below three, there's no need to panic. You're thinking you have a bad trade because you're building into a trade that you think is going to end up substantially higher. And if it goes to four, that's that's going to be a pretty monster profit uh, using the futures market for sure. Yeah. And it's just, it's an abotomy process. I mean, the way it's been in a sideways channel now, you know, for about the last eight, nine months, 
within that range. And that's another way you could play it, John, is just let it break out of that range um, and yeah. then keep your keep your stop then at the bottom of that range or a little bit below. And there again, yes, you could lose a couple points, you know, but I mean, your risk reward is un, you know, unlimited to the upside. It's very limited to the downside. So there again, it's all about stop loss, risk reward. And this is the ultimate market with that. You know, I don't know when it breaks out, if it does, but the risk reward on this could set up for a great trade. I, I fully agree. And um, we'll conclude the show here. We're just doing a little mini one for everybody since we haven't done one in a while. But we're going to be more consistent uh, because we've had people ask us to do them. So we're, we're going to do them. This is DraftKings. And I have to admit, I was really getting concerned when we were trading down here at 15, 14, 13. You know, my uh, experience has always been a stock that has been flying and then all of a sudden starts trading $9, $8, $7. Look at Peloton. Uh, Look at AMC. Once you get below 10 after being up, say, around 50, it it usually doesn't end well. Uh, But this one never got below 10. And now, you know, it seems like their earnings is gaining a tremendous amount of momentum. Uh, They have all kinds of new deals in place. Um, Another stock to consider, too, is uh, used to be Penn Gaming. Uh, They now are going to be bought out 100 percent. Um, Disney's going to buy from Comcast the remaining 27% that they don't, own, don't already own. So this Penn Gaming is going to be part of the Disney platform uh, of offerings. I mean, it's hard to believe that, you know, you have Cinderella on your TV and then, you know, one simple click and you got the sports betting markets, but that that's the direction they're heading. So I think there's a lot of momentum now in place for DraftKings. They spent, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions in marketing, every time a state opened, they had to be there. And it costs money to do that as rapidly as they did. But now it looks like this chart here is is going to do a whole lot better. And that's a weekly uh, bar chart, by the way. The daily is right here. Um, That weekly, by the way, has almost made about a 50% retracement, not the all-time high, which was March of 21. But if you look at the, the most recent high, which is like 14 months ago, September of last uh, two years ago, um, right after that, it's yep. almost been a 50% retracement here to the high. So I do think it might putter out a little bit here in the near future. But you're definitely right. The momentum has been up now for several months. Yes, I think this is if you own this stock, for those that are watching, I think you just continue to hold on to this. And maybe the next uh, show, Steve, that we line up, we can talk about buy right strategies, which is probably one of the easiest to understand strategies that's out there and also protects profits uh, like this. If you own the uh, DraftKings from 20 and you're not sure whether this is going to keep going and you're worried that it's going to go down, well, the buy right strategy can offer you a lot of comfort and some very restful nights not worrying about it. Uh, so I think that's one area I think we'll talk about next time. Any final thoughts here? And also uh, tell everybody what you got going on over at Waiter Talk today. No, I like these quick quick hitters and uh, comment below, obviously, on YouTube and let us know other stocks you'd like to look at or commodities and if you like it as well. And um, yeah, things are going well now. I mean, baseball uh, baseball's done, but basketball, college and pro, college and pro football, college and pro basketball, four major sports going right now. And I've got some strong best bets daily uh, at wagertalk.com and check that out, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And also check out all my game previews uh, for free on Wager Talk TV. Awesome, Steve. For myself, I have a 10-unit max bet going tonight on Monday Night Football, and uh, it's discounted over on the PredictedPlaybook.com, so take advantage of that. It's guaranteed, meaning that it's not guaranteed to win or lose. It means that if it doesn't win, you'll get the next one free, and that's how we like to run things around here. So on behalf of Steve Merrill and all his uh, great work over at Wager Talk and Wager Talk TV, myself, we'll look forward to seeing you seeing you the next time. So always remember, bet and and invest with your head and not over it. And may all the wins be yours. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.